Everybody doing all right? Yeah. Hey, what it is? What you gonna do if not? How you gonna handle it? What you gonna do? Whatever you do, don't quit, man. That ain't the answer. Don't ever wind up, boy, going through everything that you've gone through as a Christian and whatever God did to get you there. And that was allowing his son uh, to go through what he went through and then regret, live to regret that. Hey, Amen. Don't do that. Don't do that. I mean, don't do that. Whatever you do, don't do that. And so, man, you know, Christianity is a race. It's a walk, so it's a level of progress. And, you know, I know we're living in a country where everything's immediate gratification and, you know, you know wow, wow, you know, you know, that's why, sadly, you know, you got this uh, socialism thing, spirit there coming in and it's, uh, oh, why would I need to sacrifice time and effort, money and whatever, blood, sweat, tears, take time to establish myself as an adult when the government's promising to be able to take care of everything, you know? So I can get that. It's, it's motivation. Whatever motivates you to do the right thing for the right reason, you know? Anyway, uh, so whether it was, I think, Sunday school, uh, we had touched on this universe thing and uh, being mindful of the importance of getting in your book and uh, understanding understanding uh, what people are presenting uh, when it comes to the planet and whatnot, and I think I mentioned or asked the question, do you know if in this Bible the earth is mentioned as a planet, you know? And so I don't ever read it like that. Well, what I do know is is whatever I've been watching like on television or reading in a book from a, from a little kid like you probably. Well, then I get saved at 22, and then I start reading another book, which I never did. I never read a King James Bible a day in my life prior to receiving Christ, amen? And, but when I did, I noticed that, wow, things are, are certainly not, not what I was taught they were, right? So there's definitely more to meet, the, more to meet, there was more to, that meets the eye than what was being presented. Well, then you start realizing that, wow, well, there's a real devil out there. And then you start realizing that people are, well, you already knew that there's something wrong with people. But you realize there's a spiritual side. It's a corrupt side, right? And it's uh, the lying and, and cheating stuff and the level of corruption. Uh, then, then you realize that God's light and in him is no darkness. And then you figure out, well, there's a holy Bible. And so you then, like, everything starts lining up and the more you start reading uh, the more you start reading the more you start understanding things and again it would probably come back to the the perception thing and and you have to have a right perception you got to be motivated now how what because this Christianity thing you can't ever see anything Right? Because you don't see heaven or nothing. You don't see God. You don't see God. He ain't no, he's not showing up as a burning bush or anything like that. So that's the faith part, right? So faith comes by hearing, hearing, blah, blah. But you have to, how do you motivate yourself to, to that? What everybody's attracted to today, I mean, it's uh, pretty simple. It's everything they see, right? So it's, uh, you know, it's the boobs, right? And it's the, you know, whether you got it. Never, they don't look like that anymore, but you know, it's like that. And you have been conditioned over the course of some time now to put your trust in the things that you could see. So now you even have it to where, of course, you can you know, hold it in your hand type thing. And you, you're just constantly being inundated with these images. Well, you have to be mindful of the fact as well that behind all this stuff, I mean, what, what where are you getting you know, where is this information coming from? You know, how, do you, how are you figuring this to be? And so it's right to ask questions, and you should in that respect, but most importantly, God gave you a Bible, correct, to be able to read, and if that Bible is right, Holy Bible, if that Bible is right, then it's the Holy Spirit of God that opens your eyes, Holy yeah. Spirit, uh, to what what that truth is, right? So the entrance of thy word giveth light. Yep. So if though then you're not spending time in the book and, and you're just, of course, just, it's just like a natural response, click on, bam, then hour after hour, just, and however many 
you know, you get into the, 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 I don't know what you call it, the productive part of TV and how many times that thing clicks. If you, if you ever walk past somebody's house and you could see that blue glow going on and it's yeah. like flickering, <laughs> but when you're in the house watching, you don't see it. If you try to take a picture or video of your TV itself, you know what you'll see these lines and you won't see it with your eyes, but through the camera, you see these <clears throat> movements and these kind of weird buzzing things that actually goes on. And uh, it's very addictive, uh, addicting. So the kids at our school and you and everybody else, you know, it's this, I gotta, mm, I gotta go get it and, 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 and just constantly having to flick something on and do something. Well, what gets you from, moved away rather from this part of life, what, what gets you out of here with that image and this image long enough to get into this? And this reality that we have, this, this word of truth, I mean, where does that come from? It comes from effort, man. And outside of that, you just won't have it. God's give you all the grace in the world. However, if you're, there's no interest in trying to, to reach and move, get up, man, and just at least, at least make a motion towards truth, God ain't gonna give that to you. I don't, I don't, know, I don't know what God is being presented that you would think otherwise, but. Uh, He's he's uh, he's uh, he's that guy, and you have so much to learn in this book, so much thing. So when it comes to like the universe and what is, turn to uh, Isaiah chapter forty. Uh, look, people people have this. I, there's a whole council of God. There's there's Genesis to Revelation, and it's things that God gives you to to. I mean, why do you? You study to show thyself approved unto God, right? And seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. And you read all these different things. And, and the Lord opened their eyes to the scripture, their understanding rather. And he loosened. I was listening to uh, Revelation last night. And just, uh, I have an app, a Bible app. And just going through that. And uh, just just all the, the, the things that are in here. And I, I would tell you... Uh, the what's coming with this tribulation, you know, and I'm, you know how you feel yourself. You kind of have fallen asleep, and uh, now you, you you just hear in the back of your mind all these different things that are about to happen to this world, and it's really crazy, man. It's really beyond your imagination. Although time and time again, you'll see uh, movies about you know every movie you've ever seen. We probably mentioned this many times here. And try to remind you, every movie that you've ever seen, uh, it, it ends the same way. It's just like, you know, something happens to, about the future, that is. And it's about the future, and there's only a few people left, some kind of either plague or whatever. If you're talking about the Omega Man, or you're talking about, you know, Independence Day, or, or movies like Armageddon. And it's uh, all about some kind of catastrophe that's going on. And there's a few people, whatever, that make it out, and it's always some just giant, just disaster. Well, what is that? Well, based on this Bible, if this Bible is right, there's a there's a uh, tribulation coming, and it's just like God's after you, and 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 the devil's after you. It's so much so. I mean, you're talking billions of people that are going to be wiped out during this thing here. And it's so much so that the, Jesus Christ says in Matthew chapter 24, there hadn't ever been a time like what you're about to head into. Now, I say you, obviously, if you're saved, that's not you. But those individuals that are around you are going to go through it. I'm, I'm you know, you, you, you can't get into, it's all being, you should be able to see that. The more Bible, you, you should have that level of discernment. No, you can't go anywhere now without the mask. And we went over that too. It's. The mark's coming. So you're just being inundated with these routines that they're just constantly telling you to comply, to comply, to comply, to comply. This here is telling you, look up. This is stay here. Look up, stay here. Stay here, stay here, invest here. Everything's here. You ever notice that? Yep. Mm -hmm. And this is don't stay here, right? Uh, Hebrews says we, we, you know, we have no continuing city here. But yet, you know, you only have a short time where you're spending the amount of time in the Bible and the amount of time people... Uh, are on television, or there, you can't compare well, uh, the, the discrepancy with that. And sadly, then 
it goes back to your perspective and how your your perspective your perspective or perception and it's now jaded it's all worldly and when you hear a guy preach the message it's just like over your head and and it's just kind of like just there it's just blah so when it comes to your plan and everything else, you know, uh, I, I, I hear people call and make calls and there's documentaries on, I guess, said planet. I, I'm interested in what God has to say about a lot of different things. I don't know everything that goes on, but I hear what you would have to say about things like this. I said, why, why then, if you're saying all this, why bother? with the universe and why bother with things that are out there when you know is there anything more important than winning souls well this bible i would tell you yeah because this bible isn't a bible just solely bent on soul winning although it is good for you that you're saved but that's just this is not a book on soul winning although <clears throat> again you'd go to a typical baptist church and all they ever talk about is soul winning soul winning soul winning and is it good yeah he to win his souls is wise but look at your book how much stuff's in there so Isaiah chapter 40 here, uh, when it comes to the, uh, of course, I mean, if you want to be, look at, look at verse 15, if you want to remember kind of where we're at, because this is still not done with this election. And however it turns out, brother, God knows all too well how this thing winds up, and he already put it in your book, and it's there to know. However, if you're not going to spend time in it, you're going to be at the edge of your seat, and I can feel it, you know, I... I don't, I, I don't really care to want this Biden fella in here. He doesn't do anything to me. Uh, but there's a determination that God has, and, it, and it's going to happen. He already told you it's going to happen. Uh, verse 15, it says, Behold, the nations are as a drop in the bucket and are counted as small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles a, a very, as a very, very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering on all nations verse 17 the united states of america is all nations all nations canada germany iran whatever england all nations before him arise nothing and that doesn't seem like that's going here because again going back to these deals here this television whatever depending on what channel you watch or what what youtube channel you watch or whatever it is all about america and it's all about, oh my God, what are we going to be able to do without America? And if this president doesn't make it in, what happens? God happens is what happens. It's just going to keep on going with it. Uh, I, I'm not sure if you've ever read this Bible well enough to know that it's all sorts of trials and tribulations and uh, struggles and different things that go on in life. Uh, oh yeah, go to Second Corinthians chapter 4, look at verse 8. And know that this this Christianity thing that you got going, it should be mirroring the Bible, not the TV. But yet Christianity is more so mirroring what TV has to say than any Bible that has to say. And anytime there's the least bit discomfort, we're told to fix it immediately. Something's dead wrong and let's head out. As opposed to, no, let's, let's plow through it. That. You can't win a war unless you just sat if, if without sacrifice, right? Without determination, you cannot win a battle. There's just no battle. That's TV that you're watching. It's video games that you play. You got. I got a lot of success. Show it to me. It's in your mind. Most of what people are experiencing in America today, it's all in their mind. It's like, yeah, these great accomplishments and stuff, and there's really nothing tangible. But if you're going to be that Christian that's consistent, that's able to be used to God, you got to line up with the book. you got to line up the way God sees things. But if you don't spend time in it, there's absolutely no way you're going to be that effective Christian. And again, you're going to go back to whatever this world says do. You're going to do it, and it's a spiritual battle. But if you're not understanding the fact that there's a, there's a uh, spiritual battle, and there's a, there's a fight to be had, then, you know, it's just going to end the way it is going to end for you. And you know what? It's going to be a big zero. Look at, uh, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, starting at verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Well, Paul takes for granted that this God that's running this planet right now, although you, I would tell you he understands and acknowledges the fact 
that there's a God God, capital G God, but even way back in 60 AD, if the Schofield reference note is right, Paul said in verse 4, the God of this world, the devil is, is the God of this world. So I say that when you look, flip on the back of your dollar bill, amen, and it says, in God we trust, but on that same exact dollar bill, hey amen, you got this satanic, you know, all-seeing eye, pyramid, Illuminati type of whatever with the 13 this and 13 that. That ain't the guy. If you think that, remember, remember, uh, remember your God. So your God is, uh, uh, can you just get to God without Jesus Christ? All right, now, here, with your other hand, we'll go back to 2 Corinthians, and we'll go back to Isaiah 40. But go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2, starting verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 2. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, and intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for, for kings and for all that are in authority. You, you see that? You see that? See, there's, there's a role for politics within Christianity. It's just not lining up to Fox News or these Patriot channels and stuff. And again, I, I, I would like that Donald Trump win because, to me, he did a pretty good job. And if nothing else, he's very – or at least he says he is, and, and I've had liberty that he's favorable towards the church. Now, is he a Christian? I don't know. I mean, he's like, if he is, he's like a typical Christian because they don't, he don't know anything. And how do you know he don't know anything? How dare you? Uh, well, just look what he does. Look who he's pointing. He's tightly yoking up with the Catholic Church, but that's nothing new for Christians. All right, verse 2, for kings, right? And you're talking about prayers and supplication again. Look at verse 2, for who? Kings and for all that are in authority. All of them. That includes your leftists, by the way. That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. So what is the purpose of our life? Man, just to make it through these days. How do you know that? Because that's what it just said. That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. That is your role. That is how you're supposed to live. Is there a political link? There is a politi political link. What does that got to do with you? Uh, well, as far as politics go, you're supposed to... Uh, uh, you got supplicate, you got words like this, ready? Here's your, here's your political role. Supplications, prayers, and intercession, and giving thanks. That's it. Voting ain't in it, although you could kind of, I don't know, render under Caesar the things that are Caesar type stuff. And so again, that's, that's contrary to what you're, what you're reading or what you're watching on this TV deal, how this is working out. It's contrary because your natural man it can only respond, your natural man, your natural side of you, the natural side, the, the corrupt side of you, only responds to things that it can see. That's it. It does not, it has a, go ahead, if you think I'm kidding, go ahead and pray for five minutes. You have a song, I don't know if it's in our, that book, but there's a song called Sweet Hour Prayer. A what? <laughs> yeah, so anyway, it's supposed to be a song, and it's a great song. But that's written from a guy that didn't have a television, amen? Not like you have it. And that is so foreign to Christianity today. A, an hour, a sweet hour of prayer and where you're just alone without God with any distractions, amen? You're alone in a room somewhere and it's just you and God because that is what that means. And that's what those prayers and supplications in verse 1 is all about. And God in this book or through this book, are give, he's given you the means to succeed. But again, it comes back down to all this junk that's going on. There's a satanic force out there, right? It's a satanic presence, and its sole purpose is just to be contrary to God. And you have to be the one that knows that and sees that and then fights against it. That's your battle now. If you want the fight, you know, oh, you know, I saw, I heard the guy on Facebook, he's like, well, 2020 is the new 1776 and all that. Uh, you know, again, as a pastor, and I was talking, I think, to Scott. Uh, I and I, my wife knows this. When it comes to well, what do you think about America? I don't look at Fox News in the White House. I look at the Christians. I believe wholeheartedly, and I've said this a thousand times. 
I believe wholeheartedly that your Christianity, because it's righteousness that exalted the nation, but sin is a reproof, I think it says, to all people. A what? A reproach? A reproach. All right, so righteousness is exalted the nation. All right, but if it's just an unsaved guy doing right, then you got to be careful because cause that will be a contradiction in that all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. So then where's the righteousness that exalts the nation coming from? Is it, again, it could either be just everybody in general that doesn't drink and doesn't smoke and doesn't chew, Although, again, God doesn't see that righteousness. Uh, if you're going to, because then it would be, well, then let's just all work ourselves to heaven. If you say that the righteousness is there, and I could be wrong, but I don't know that I'm wrong. Because, again, if, if the righteousness is exalted the nation and God's going to bless your country for you doing right outside of Christ, and then you die and go to hell, that's odd to me. And I could be wrong, but I don't think I'm wrong in that. So where does the righteousness come from? Well, the righteousness would then have to, like in Old Testament, now that was a kingdom of God set up type, type kingdom of heaven set up with those Jews, and their deeds as God's children, amen, did reflect that, but they were God's children like by birth, where you are now God's children by being born again. So the righteousness then to, to get a country, amen, to where it is this, it's exalted like America, it would have had to come from righteousness through the God's people thing. God, you, Christians. Mm -hmm. All right, so then if that's the case, if that's how it really works, just look at the state of Christianity. And if you want to know a detailed description of Christianity, then let Jesus Christ tell you, and that would be Revelation 3. Mm -hmm. All right, it's Wednesday night. All right, oh, Wednesday night's tough to go to church. See, here we go now. And then now the same group of people are going to be out there with memes and Nancy Pelosi's trying to kill America or whatever. I'm not, I'm trying to help you out, man. It ain't Nancy. You're supposed to pray for her. That's all that says about her. It ain't supposed to call her the witch or the whatever. And she's Jezebel and all those Christians out there. They do that very same thing. When Paul says very specifically, I exhort therefore, verse 1, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions. And giving of thanks be made to all men. It said, or rather, uh, for all men. That's what it says. It didn't say Republicans. But that's how it's working out. Yeah. And I said, too, man, if you're not careful, you're going to start hating some people. Because you're going to have this thought. You just know that, man, that will just shoot them. And I've, I've felt that way many times, man. Just, man, you know, you just see this ridiculous, and you know all the cheating, and they're pulling all the ballots out, man, you know, and you're thinking, wow, you know what? A, a 810 warthog will take care of all that. And you just have this deal. But God says, look, man, that's not how I said do. I said pray for them. And you don't like that prayer because that's here. And we're living here most of the time. By their fruit, you should know them. You can talk all you want, how you love Jesus, love Jesus. You know, they worship me with their mouth, their lips, but their heart is far from. Right. And Christ sees all that. He can cut through all that. But the time tells, brother, very telling. And you are in the condition you're in. You're on the in the position that you're in based on the time you spend on whatever you spend on. And it'll show. When it's time to show up, man, where art thou, brother? Where art thou, Adam? You know, that's how that works. Look at verse 2. For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Is there a period after that? Okay, but that's not according to the patriots and Mark Levin and all the rest of them. They just want to add all sorts of different things. But that's all that is. You know why he said, hey man, just get through this deal, doing what I want you to do, is because once again, this world is not your home. Paul just said over there in 2 Corinthians, who's the God of this world? It's the devil, man. It ain't Jesus Christ. It ain't God Almighty. Matter of fact, it was the devil telling Jesus Christ, hey, man, I can give you these kingdoms. I don't know if the devil is just that stupid and he's not understanding, you know, some, some basic Bible truths, but the devil's very convinced that the power of these kingdoms are his. So much so that when he offered that, was tempting Christ, one of the temptations was, hey, I can get you to rule this thing. Right. Which means he's getting people to rule this thing. Now, the, the, the faith that you need, the understanding of the Bible, Bible knowledge you need to know is that, again, God trumps all that. No pun intended. But you have to, as a Christian, when it comes to your level, if Christ was made, or is man a little lower than the angels, is that what that is, man? 
man was made a little lower than the angels type. So you have a, a place, you got a spot. So the, 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 the term would be know your role. You ever heard that? Because I remember when I first started working juvenile justice, I had this administrator and on his screen, his whole big motto was know your role. And or you listen to the football guy and he says, do your job. Or you've heard people say, do your job. If everybody just pulls their weight and does their job, whatever you put your mind towards, you'll be able to do much better. You'll find that that's the success. However, if you're not all doing your job, and especially as a team in a church, you could look at a church as a team, then, then you're going to find that we're lopsided. We're not quite there. We're always falling back. We're always three steps behind the goal or whatever. It's because not everybody's pulling their weight. Not everybody's doing what they, they're supposed to do. It only comes here. It doesn't come here. But again, the more time you spend outside the book, the influences that you have, they're not biblical. And then, you know, I tell you, devil here, that's the devil. Oh, that's the devil. That one there, devil, you're being deceived, it's wrong, don't do it. But you can't respond to that if you're not in it. You won't, you just sit there. And the devil's smarter than you are. So he's got all sorts of wild things going on. And then, sadly, some of the brothers are like, well, if it ain't soul winning, there's something wrong with why you're studying what you're studying. That's not true. I don't know why they say that other than, you know, maybe they don't necessarily agree with an angle type thing. And I won't always agree with you and everything. I'll know this, even though we might not always agree with some, this Bible, there is no disagreeing with the Bible, amen. So that's why I try to as much as possible when it does come to trying to prove a point, what does the universe look like? I'll take you to the Bible. What does the planet Earth look like? Is the Earth the planet type stuff? That's how we started this conversation. That's when we went on, on Sunday school. And right away, people just like, oh, well, man, you know, how do you, how dare you think that way? Because it's already been proven. And all I'm asking you to do is just think, okay, so what's proven? What's proven and how did you prove it? So we stay in the Bible, we stay in the Bible. And then right away, man, you start to refocus on the, the means of why you're even here and what your role is. And is there a role in politics with Christianity? It sure is. And it ain't, it ain't voting. Even though I guess you can vote and go ahead and vote. Did you see how voting got you? What did, what did voting get you today? Because what's the conversation today? You want, me, you want me to write the word now? You know what the conversation is today? It's voting. And you know what the issue is? They don't know who won. Or some say they do and some say they don't. The ones that say you don't know who won, it has to go back to that. So now you're saying, well, the most important thing that you have in America is one man, one vote. And it doesn't look like it. it. Looks like there's a problem with that. And unless God decides he's going to flip it and, and that's his prerogative because it sounds like he runs all this stuff, even though the devil's doing it, God trumps all that stuff, then, then you're going to have to, to identify the fact that this election, by definition, didn't work didn't work man so then now you have to ask yourself or you should ask yourself well what's next well you either just go back to whatever you're doing and then you just lose you you know what this does you know what what crooked christianity does it undermines people it it shatters their their uh uh picture or their uh idea of what what should be the right thing as far as christians are concerned but the same way it's going here because you won't the, the idea that, that these guys that went through this process on that day, the voting day, it's uh, a vote of no confidence is what, what they're, they're aiming at. Right now, there's, there are these cases in the Supreme Court that I guess these judges, these Catholic judges, that's Revelation 17 and 18, man. Again, here, you got to, everything's going your way. Here, you're leading towards the tribulation, man, and you better get out. And he's talking, Jesus Christ talking about days a lot and days of Noah. Yep. Days of Noah and days of lot. That's what he's talking about. This is talking about, oh, four more years, everything's good, we can make America great. This one says it's less than nothing, your country. This one here, celebrate homosexuality and all the rest of that stuff. This one says, man, I'm going to burn them up again. I use them as an example in the book of Jude. And here we got kids, little Christian kids, talking about, well, if my kid grew up to be a homosexual, man, you know, I should embrace that. That's what you got. And they're already ready to get drunk. They're all talking about tattoos. They're all talking about, yep, and my grandpa, my grandma told me, don't get a tattoo. And my mother said, whenever you're ready, I'll take you. 
Now I'm listening to this, and they're talking out in a, in a Christian school, man. They're talking as dead, as serious as a heart attack. And you know what I said? Listen to your grandpa. Don't do it. You know what we used to call a, 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 a tattoo on a female back in the day? It's a trans, tramp stamp. That's what we called it. But now, of course, you're living in the great, you know, yin yang and all the rest, and right is wrong and wrong is right and up is down. Well, that Bible says, woe to them that call good evil and evil good. Amen? So you know, as a Christian, one day you'll step out of this body of yours, correct? And then you'll see God. You want to know for sure? It's, that day's coming for you. The end of all things is at hand. But I'm telling you, man, you want to talk about a mess. I just listen. And these kids are biting at the bit because all they do, and that's any typical Christian you're running into, man, they just constantly out hours upon hours of being inundated, right, with what's on this television, which is if that Bible was right in 2 Corinthians, amen, that's the God of this world that's running us. Through. It's the devil. That's why when it comes time for him to manifest himself in the flesh, the whole world falls after him. Why? They're already that they're they're ninety eight percent falling through with them now. It's all satanic. Christians are in all even Christians are supporting them. For the kings and for them that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of who? Verse 3. Okay. Don't you want to please your Savior? Yeah. Okay, how do you do that? Well, let's circle the first two verses, because this says, for this. What is this? Well, verses 1 and 2. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Who's our Savior? Jesus Christ. So he just, that's your deity of Jesus Christ. So Jesus must be God? Yeah, he, he is God. That's why you'll see when Paul's writing, he, he writes a great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He'll say stuff like that. Verse 4. Who will have all men to be saved? There's your anti-Calvinist deal. Whose will, right? That's who will, that's his will. Have all, circle all, men to be saved. Not just the elect, not just the Baptist, right? Not just so-and-so, but all men and to come unto the knowledge of the truth, all right? So, so you see where get saved, and then what? You come to the knowledge of the way. Get saved first, and then the light shines. Now you're, now you're born again. Now you've got huh, a new level of consciousness, right? So the Buddhists and, and the New Agers, man, they're all the vegan witches and everything, and it's just... It's amazing because, see, especially little girls, you always get caught up in that kind of stuff, man. And it's 98% girls. Although you listen to these crazy people, these PETA people, man, and they're killing people and blowing things up. And it's all, and it's all coming down to this weird connection. Vegetables. <laughs> Veggie tails, right? Yeah. It's all vegetables. And somehow, man, there's this thing that just, once again, ask yourself the question. So we talk to the kids, and they're talking about, well, what happens if my little boy, if he's eight or six or four, and, he's, and he says he wants to be a girl? And, you know, the thing that we said, like, my response was, well, what happens if you walk in the nursery and he's slapping another kid? What do you do to him? You take care of it, right? Oh, yeah. But that's different. That's right away they say that's different. Or you come into the nursery, and he's stealing, right? Or he's cussing or what, doing something ridiculous. And they're like, oh, well, no, right away you got to correct that because we know that's wrong. You can't just go around slapping kids around. Right, there you go. Now you're thinking. So then you come in one day and the nursery worker tells you, well, he's wearing lipstick and, and, and kissing on other boys. And then somehow you'd say, well, well, we then got to support that, though. That's different. And that's, what, and that's what they believe. I've heard that argument so many different times. But what's sad about it, now I'm hearing from self now you're hearing it from self-proclaimed Christians. Well, if this Bible's right here, uh, look at verse 4 again. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. So go find that truth. So now you're saved, but what's happening? They don't want to know the truth. They ain't looking. It says come to, correct? Yeah. Come unto, rather. Does that work? I mean, um, I'll kill the, the whole English deal. I can't diagram sentences. I, I used to maybe, but is there a verb somewhere in there with and to come unto somehow is an adverb or a verb? Is there an action there? To come is showing on. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. 
So is there effort involved in what I just said? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Please. Can you teach us? Be a good teacher. Uh, okay then. Where's the effort? Where's the effort? There was even effort involved, you know, and you're getting saved because you at least raise your hand or talk to the guy who had a Bible. Whatever you did, you at least listen. And what's happening in this world is that ain't happening no more, though. But I'm, we're going to talk about a plan in a second, but I'm bringing you all around over this deal because there's so much there to be known. And God just didn't say the gospel. He just didn't say. He said the truth. And then what does his son say he is? I am the way, the, the truth, and the life. So he's the, tr the second title, the way, the truth. The way first, then truth, and then, then the life, right? All right. So there is no life without truth. So you way out of the way without truth. Now you can go. You can preach all that kind of stuff. You you follow me? You have to have an effort or some desire. My question to you: I start out. Maybe we should have labeled this differently. Where's your effort going to come from? Where are you going to get that? Because you need a spark. You need some kind of jump. Like the cars, like just acting up. You need a charge. You need that. How do you get that? If Jesus Christ is power, if the Holy Spirit of God, every time you see Him showing up, man, He's creating things and moving. And he's given these guys boldness and understanding and light. There's power. That's power. Well, how do you tap into that? Well, doing right. And there's that effort. And you walking up. And I don't know, following the directives of what you got in these particular chapters. And he's telling you what to do. But yet, everybody's going contrary. And then somehow you keep scratching your head like, man, how come that didn't work out right? That's weird. Because I was sincere about it. Well, so was Cain. You can't read that Cain was insincere. You can't read that he was lazy. You can't read that he wasn't a hard worker. I guess if he's a tiller of the ground, whatever that means. You ever tried digging a hole? <laughs> man, I had to dig a grave for my dog in the backyard, man. I didn't get the whole hole dug without laying down on that deck for a minute. Isn't that weird? It's just a little chihuahua hole. <sighs> Look at verse 5. For there's one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Right? who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. There's that all again. But I go back to verse 5 because I started with this little, you know, Lord of the Ring thing, this evil eye. Because on the back of your dollar it said, in God we trust. Yep. What you just read in a roundabout way for me to explain what this satanic influence is, your dollar doesn't mean anything. When any one of them guys say, at the end of every one of their speeches, they say... And God bless America. Right. All right? Well, look God. Yeah. They'll write it down even. They'll probably put a capital G. But that don't mean nothing either. Uh -huh. God told you there's more than one God. And then if you're going to come to me, and I'm, you're going to go to be the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob God, that one, you got to go through Jesus Christ. And Christ is called the door. Now, if, again, you hearing all these people talk about God, and you're thinking somehow this United States of America and everything that you've been hearing... Is all that same God? It is not the same God. And just because a Catholic gets up there, the Pope talks about God, and a Muslim talks about God, and Jehovah's Witness talks about God, and, and then your Baptist preacher talks about God, brother, sister, they ain't the same God. They are not. But yet, again, sadly, because of our lifestyle and our just wanting to do what we want to do, you, 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 resigned, you, get, you resigned all that away. You signed off. You just gave it all up, man. You just gave it away. That is, that is Esau at his finest. That is him just resigning and, and despising his birthright. And Christians do it over and over and over and over. And God says, you know, this whole thing is about truth. I am the truth. Sanctify them by thy word. Thy word is truth. Right. And Christians, I don't know how, other than that, you got to get in the book. And you're not getting in the book. You're not getting it. You're sitting there on a phone. You're sitting there on a television. You're just in dating yourself, man, with all this wrong information. And God sits back and, and, you know, what are you doing, boy? What you doing, son? What's going on, kid? What's, lady, hey, sister, what are you doing? And, and it's, you're just that. You don't know. And I, I try, I, you know, I got my own problems now. I, I'll preach to you. But if you don't think, man, this Christianity, you know, doesn't come with a price, it's a price, it's an effort, it's moving forward, it's digging, man. Wisdom's like an under jewels, man, and riches. Wisdom is, well, how do you get that? Well, dig. Without putting on your Indiana Jones hat, I guess, and go fight some, I don't know, whatever you got. You got to fight to get it. All right, now go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 
Verse 3. For if our gospel is hid, or be hid rather, it is, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, his name is Satan, if you don't know. He's called the angel of light of 2 Corinthians, by the way. So I saw the light, you sure? Okay. Who hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel should, uh, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus Christ's sake. For God, who hath commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Now, do you remember where you first heard that? That was in your creation. You know where you first heard that? That was after Genesis 1-2, when the earth was without form and void. I'm telling you, man, there's a big old gap in that thing. And then again, it's people because they refuse to read their Bible and they're getting caught up in that. That's not what Joshua Geographic said, or that ain't what preacher so-and-so said. Boy, but I don't care what, what did God say. But well, you read that there, that light shining in darkness type stuff. That was when he, that's, this right here is, this reference is of the new birth. Did you see the new birth all up in here? Yep. All right, lest the light of the glory, blinded the mind, that's your blind is darkness. You know what happened in Genesis 1-2? There's darkness. Whatever light was there, God is that light. I don't know if you've ever read... Uh, do you know what happens at, at this new earth and this new world and all this stuff? Uh, look at uh, Revelation chapter 21. You know, there was no sun. sun. The sun was created, right? All right, well, when, when everything's going right, you have no need of a second source of light. God's a light. Now, your situation is because of this darkness and everything, you're going to have to have a level of that. But when God's there and everything's going right, you know what there is no need of? There ain't no light. Now, let me make sure I get this. Look at, uh, all right, look at uh, Revelation chapter 21, look at verse 1. Now, this is, this is uh, after the great white throne judgment, right? So this is, at this point here, this is, uh, this is uh, the new heaven and the earth, uh, new stuff. This is what you're looking for, by the way. Uh, one, Revelation 21, 1. And I saw a new, a new heaven, right? Kind of get too deep into this right now, but... You know where heaven, the singular, it says singular there. All right, well, that's Genesis 1, 1, there's singular. This whole experience that we got, we only have 70 years, right? This is a blink, right? What is your life? It's but a vapor that appeared for a short time in the advanced way. Is getting things back to where I wanted them to be. It started in Genesis 1, 1. I guess if everything would have just been right in Genesis 1, 1, there would have been no Genesis 1, 2. But know where this is all heading back to. I'm going to tell you, it's going back to where he started off this thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it right. And it's just taking time to get it right. It takes time, man. Rome wasn't built today, right? You ever heard that? Yeah. All right, so know that. You know how long it took you to finally get that King James Bible? There's 4,000 years in the Old Testament, and that was 1611. So that's 5,100 and uh, whatever it is, right? It's over almost 5,000 years. Do you know how long it took Jesus Christ to finally come and get that thing taken care of on the cross? 4,000 years. You know how long it took to create? No, I say create. Make? That's because that's a different word. We can get into that. We'll get into that. You know there's a difference between create and make? Creation is from something. You created something. Making is, some, is, is a process that you, that you do with material that's already there. When you read about this creation thing, you read that God uses two different words. In the beginning, God created, and then the rest of it is made. After Genesis 1-2, you start hearing this made thing. Why? It was already created. Made is using things that are already there. Look what I made. Well, the wood, you didn't make the wood. The wood was created. Right. Where did the wood come from? See, you go that route, right? Uh, so anyway... So you read about all that, and there's this God, he says, in heaven. And now what you're doing is seeing that God is now, all things are made new, all this stuff, and it's over. There's an end, thank God, to all this. It's just a process. You, you, you know, Aliyah's going through her, her deal with the baby. That's, that's nine months, man, give or take. That's how that works. With your kids, my kids, your kids, well, your wife, rather, for her. 
uh, nine months, man. You want, I want this, now I want. It, it's going to start here, and it's going to go here, and it's going to be a process to it. He said, we're just going to cut corners and all that, right? And that's also called compromising. Trust God, right? And he talks about your faith. You know what he likens your faith to? A seed. A mustard seed, right? Yeah. But it's a seed. All right. I guess if that's if that's a mustard seed from mustard, anyway, it, 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 okay. The seed don't do nothing, by the way. That ain't the issue. The issue is the process. There, you plant the seed now, just like your salvation. You didn't get saved the first time you heard about Jesus Christ. I know you didn't. I know. I guarantee you did it. Now you might have, but I doubt it. Right? All right. So it just all takes a lot of time. What are we talking about? I don't know a lot of stuff. We're talking about this influence that you have here. Ah. Uh, this thing here doesn't have batteries. You don't plug it in, man. You got no lights blinking and flashing, no gunshots going off. Nobody, you know, uh, but there's a lot of action in it. It's what God chose as a means of communicating with you. So is, is there a God? Yes or no? <coughs> did he say anything? Yes or no? And if he did, where is it at? That's, that's the reality of what you need. So when you're witnessing the people, I usually go that route. I say, hey, man, all this talk, you just need to ask yourself three, three questions and go that route. Is there a God? No, no. Did he say anything? If he did, where is it at? All right, verse 1. Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. All right, so that whole that holy city, so that goes to John chapter 14. In my Father's house are many mansions. And I go to pray a place for you, and, and if it would not so, I would have told you. All right, that place that he's talking about with those mansions, that is New Jerusalem. That is in verse 2, right? And then he goes on to say, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And then here's the cool part, right? So this is, well, why go to heaven? Well, God's going to wipe away all his tears. Now, remember where that is. So you want to know another message, another study is, figure out when them tears start, stop, and then figure out when the pain stops and the sorrow stops. And you're like, as soon as I get to heaven. That is not what that said. You get to heaven, you can, get, you can get to heaven in 2020, man. This is not 2020. This is after a thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. So whatever the date is, know that it's at least 1,000 years away. You could be in heaven. And there'd be some pain and sorrow and some whatever. You know where that's going to come out of? That judgment seat of Christ is going to be there. The Bible said they suffer in the, at the judgment seat of suffer loss. I asked that question. Hey, man, is there any suffering in heaven? And never right away you would say because of this verse here. This is why you say that. Oh, no, because there's no sorrow. Look at verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. Woohoo! Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall be any more pain, for former things are passed away. It is there. That's there. You're here. And you go to that judgment seat of Christ, man. Now, again, I don't know how that works. I mean, for like a thousand years, man, and you just came up short as far as your will of God, and you bombed out, man, at the judgment seat of Christ. You just have a thousand years of misery, I guess. I guess. Where are we at? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Man, there's also terms like nakedness, too. What you going to do with that? It's like, oh, I couldn't be. It can't be that way because you just can't think of it that way. But you couldn't think of the fact that God damned the whole human race because somebody ate a piece of fruit either, could you? Can you wrap your head around that? Doesn't that seem a little extreme? Why'd you do this, Lord? What in the world, man? It surely would have been because he killed somebody. Because that's the big, don't do. Don't kill somebody. Don't steal, at least. She just took one bite, man. Didn't even say that took the whole cluster 20 days later. It was one bite. And God, and not only did he damn the whole human race, kick everybody out. You know how that ended, right? It ended in his own death. Now, that don't even make sense because I certainly wouldn't, you know, what would you die for? You would say, what, your wife, I guess, maybe your kids? Of course, me, but I mean, <laughs> nobody said that. 
I'm going to change my message. All right. First Corinthians chapter 3, look at verse 12. Here is the description of what you're headed for. So then every one of us shall give account of himself unto God. All right. So here's verse 12. You want to see what it's going to be like? All right. I'll show you. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. So you got six building materials, right? Verse 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest. So we'll, we'll know why you're in church, why you weren't in church, why if you really said whatever. For the day, you, you can circle the day there, and that's another message. That day that's coming, hmm, payday, someday. Whatever, you got little terms on that. Someday you'll get yours, right? Every dog has his day, right? I get it. That, but you get that from King James Bible. Shall declare because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work according to what sort it is, not the amount. It's going to be quality. So go back to verse 12 and realize out of gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, which one of them are going to make it past the fire? Well, not the last three. That wood, hay, and stubble ain't going to cut it. That's going to be burned up. All right, verse 14. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, right, he shall receive a... Wow, look at that, a reward. And you can just run the references on that, inheritance and rewards and different things you got for you. Verse 15, now here we go. Now this takes place, where do you think this takes place? Heaven or earth? This right here. Some guys will say, like, no, it's happening now, you're being judged every day by God. Uh uh, that is an event. See, how do you know that? See, that says verse 13, for the day shall declare it. That day, you have your day in court. You ever heard that? Okay, well, that's like that. Now, verse 15, this is in heaven. This is after the rapture. Okay, well, if any man's work shall be burned, he didn't say him, he said his work. He shall, on the line that word, suffer, lost, suffer. So I asked him, can you suffer in heaven? Everybody, no, 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 no. How do you, where do you know that? And they're like, oh, go over there to Revelation. I said, before you hit Revelation 21, 4, you got to hit 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And verse 15 says, If any man's work shall be burned, he himself shall suffer loss, but he well, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, right? Yet are sold by fire. You'll be saved. Your salvation is settled at the cross. But you won't be judged, brother, sister. And there's sorrow there, man. And you're talking here at the end of a thousand years. So you bomb out with nothing. You think anybody, you think, man, you think that, uh, you think, man, you could be in heaven and, and when it comes to uh, showing something for Christ, you can, like, to have nothing to show? Uh, you ever been in a situation like that in life? You ever been told to do something and not do it? Okay, well, there are consequences. Okay, so the answer to that question is absolutely. I mean, you just so far, again, now we just go back to this little thing here. Because you're just here. And right here, you're not. Th now, that don't make sense here. It does here. Now, that's why the Lord says, uh, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. What's that ashamed part? Where does that come in? Because you don't know the answers to something. It's part of it. But you know what shame is in your Bible? It's nakedness. You ever, uh, you ever hear what God says? I hope it doesn't show up with me. Go to Revelation chapter 3. He's like, man, I hope this don't show up, man, when I see you. Because you got opportunity right now. You're still alive. Yeah. All right. Well, get right. Because it looks like some of you coming up there with your birthday suit. All right, Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. Now you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, you have nine verses left in this life of ours. Because verse 4 is the rapture. Chapter 4, 1 is the rapture. You have nine verses left in your Bible. That's it. Nine left. Because this is the latency in church age. This is the last apostate. Ends all, it all ends in trash. Verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works. You can go kid your grandmother about what you're doing. But he knows your works. That thou art neither cold nor hot, and I would that thou were cold or hot, so that because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I'll spew thee out of my mouth. See, you've got a bunch of friends right now that are living like you are, so you can't possibly believe that that has anything to do with you. Although he's talking to you. How do you know that? See that word, thy? Verse 15? 
That's your words. If you're saved, he's talking to you personally. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with good and have need of nothing. I don't need to go to church. I don't need to read no Bible. I don't need to win souls. I don't need to get right. I don't have any need. There ain't no church. There ain't got nothing going on. I'm fine. And knoweth not that he sees you for you really are. It wasn't Superman with them x-ray eyes, man. It's God Almighty. It's Jesus Christ. Right. And knoweth not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. That's odd. So you're like, well, that's figurative. Okay. I would hope so. But if it ain't, now I say if it ain't, I hope it ain't, because verse 18 doesn't doesn't seem like it implies that it's figurative or if it's a parable, whatever you want to try to say. It almost appears that when you see him, when you appear before God, you're going to appear just like, you ever heard that song, Just As I, did we sing that? Yeah. Just that? Uh -huh. All right. You're going to appear just as I am, as, just as you are. All right. Look at verse 18 now. That's why it's important to read the Bible, man. I'm telling you. You can have a great Christian life. You can have an underachieving life that you regret. It almost sounds like at least for 1,000 years you're going to have a regret. You're going to bring through, drag through that 1,000 years. Yep. Regret. Why everybody else is ruling, that's the time that you're going to, if you're going to take care, well, if we suffer with him, we'll reign with him. Where is that? At the 1,000-year reign. That's, gee, that's Adolf Hitler, the third reign, the third right, right? That's the counterfeit. The real deal is coming. The Antichrist is going to try to set it up with your mask and COVID and all the rest of the stuff that you're getting ready for. 18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the furnace of fire. And you read about that in 1 Corinthians, didn't you, about that gold? That thou mayest be rich. So does God want you to be poor, miserable, and lonely and all that? No. Now, where does that rich, where do you think the rich, that rich right there applies, here or there? Yeah, it'll be there because it's your cross here and then your crown. That's what Christ did. Would, would Christ have a mansion? Did, did Jesus Christ, you want to you hear something wild? You have a better house than Jesus did. Matter of fact, if I read my Bible right, he didn't have a place to put his head. And you weren't born in the barn, although that's what your mother said, right? When you had a dirty room. All right. That thou may, uh, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich. In a white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed. Oh, what? And that the shame, see, of thy nakedness do not appear. Shame. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needeth not be ashamed. Huh, I read that. Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.15. Well, they take that out of all the new Bibles, including the New King James Bible. Why would they do that? Well, who would be setting you up to be naked in hell? Was there anybody pull fast one like that? You ever seen the emperor's new clothes? You ever ever had that? Man, them guys, that, that that king, that supposed king, that royalty is walking around no clothes on. Brother, there's a devil out there smarter than you, man. And he got you bamboozled and thinking, man, you know, you become this vegan whatever, and you're just going to have a good old time and just don't worry about nothing and do your deal. Are you sure? Because everything I'm reading says, man, you're about to hit the wall. Just picture an egg and a brick wall. And the egg is what you feel like you're going to get away with. And then just throw it as hard as you can at that brick wall and see how much of that egg goes through the brick wall. And that's your, the probability of you getting past what this thing to called God is in your life. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich in white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thy eyes with eyes salve that thou mayest see. Why? Or rather, so what do I do? Verse 19, the only applicable thing you need to concern yourself with in the last verse, or the last verses here, last nine verses, is verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore and repent. So the whole thing, man, is coming all the way. Let's close with this. Go back to Revelation 21. We'll close. The sun was created for you after Genesis 1-1. So you say, well, no, God is that in. And then that's why I have a reservation with this heliocentric deal. The heliocentric thought is that everything revolves around the sun. 
and we'll get into this on Sunday school. Uh, we were talking more so about that then than here. Well, I'd have a problem with that. First of all, you guys ever read about Joshua? Did he ever fight and the sun stop? Did it? Did it? Well, not if it's heliocentric, it did it. That's what it says. The sun stood still. Now, you go outside tomorrow and you look in the sky and know what you could see moving? See with your eyes. You know what moves? The sun moves. You can see it. You can videotape it. They say, these guys here say, uh-uh, you ain't seeing that. I'm not, because it's moving. No, that ain't what you really, you may think it feels that way. See, that's that whole evolution thing. They know that cats out there, they all come from cats. And they say, I, I, no, uh That came from a chicken one day. That was a tadpole when it began to begin. That's what they say, see? It's the old okie doke it's the, the shell game, right? Yeah. What do you, you just walked out thinking you just got the greatest deal at the Ford dealership. You did, did you? You sure about that? Because they're all laughing in the back. We got that dude. We saw him coming a mile away, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now for six years, you're paying $600 a month. Six years, man. And then they had, they got all that rest of that stuff. You just loaded it up. And what'd, they, what'd you walk away with? They gave me a balloon. I don't know. 72 month payment type deal going on. Uh, they say your earth is spending a thousand miles an hour right now and while it's spending a thousand miles an hour I think it was uh, yeah it's spinning a thousand miles an hour a bullet coming out of a gun is 700 miles an hour 700 your earth is faster than that and it's going around the sun at the same time Correct, that's what they say, it's heliocentric. Geocentric is everything revolves around the Earth. Heliocentric, hell, helio, that's how I looked at it. Geo is a car, that's the only way I figured out the car. Okay, car, but helio is hell, fire, all right, sun. They say that the Earth, they say the Earth is moving. This crew here, the one on the back of your dollar bill, that guy that's peeking out on you, the COVID guy, he take a vaccine, a warp speed guy. And he says, uh, you're going around the sun at 67,000 miles an hour. You ever been in a fast car? You ever been in a roller coaster? I don't like roller coasters, man. When I was a kid, I was all right. I don't like them no more, man. But I know that I'm from flipping down and flipping upside down. I know I'm flipping down and upside down. All right, you are right now, listen to me. Beware of oppositions of science, falsely so-called, correct? That's what Paul said, hey. Not science, but sci oppositions of science. Right. It's scientifically, it's scientific to say a cat comes from another cat. It's observable. You just look at the definition of science and then, then just go ahead and figure it out. So they say that this earth right now is spinning at 1,000 miles an hour. Now, I'm telling you, listen to me, you're spinning at 1,000 miles an hour, and you're like, right. On top of that, you're shooting through outer space at 67,000. I don't know what kind of speedometer you use to get that number. Why not 70,000? But anyway, we'll use their numbers. 67,000 miles an hour. Now, now, your mind is telling you right now, right now, that nothing's moving. Hmm. Okay, but I gotta go against what I can observe. It's flat, stationary, I'm balanced, I ain't moving. Nothing, the floor ain't, that foundation ain't moving. You have to say then, nope. Watch me now, watch me now, watch me now. You're all really moving at a thousand miles an hour. And then I got these kids, right? And they're like, uh, I heard them, I heard them, uh, I was eating my peanut butter and jelly sandwich. They're like, well, which way is up? I'm, I'm just watching these geniuses. 
And they they look at each other and I and said, we can't ever know which way is up. And I thought, oh my goodness, man. So that means you can't work at UPS because there's a box that says this side up or whatever, and you can't know, you can be jamming it up against the wall, man. All right, but I'm telling you, if I ask you right now in this room, point up, you would know that that's as easy as doing what I just now did. Right. But because you've been watching that, they've been telling you, but that ain't really up. You don't know, man. And that's why they're talking about a about swing. We don't even know what's up. And Lord's like, seriously? <laughs> Look up. How? Oh. Because what they want you to believe is that you're like this. Here you are. Sideways, upside down, spinning, right, at a thousand miles an hour, shooting through outer space at 67,000 miles an hour. That's you, spinning around at a thousand miles an hour, shooting through outer space at 67,000 miles an hour. Now, what your reality, the reality of it, scientifically speaking, is that you're sitting and you're not moving. If I ask you to write, answer this question: Are you moving right now? You know what you know to say. If you're, if you unless you're crazy, you say no. And then, then it'd be like you'd leave and you turn on the television, and you'd have to come back and change your answer. You'd have to tell me, oh, wait a minute, I just saw the show. What show? Well, this National Geographic deal. They just said we are moving. Did you feel like you're moving? Well, no, but that guy said it, man. It was for an hour, hour and a half long. It was a series. It was part one or two. Yeah. And I am. Not only am I spinning around. Have you ever been? Have you ever spun around? Did you know when you were? Yeah. We call it a merry-go-round. Right. You ever have them deals where you just got the guy, and who's going to be the guy on that thing at the playground, and you're going to have another one to spin it until he goes shooting off and throws up everywhere? Yeah. That's spinning. The, the sun in your Bible stopped, stood still. If it was the planet that stood still, spinning at 1,000 miles an hour, shooting through outer space at 67,000 miles an hour, and you put the brakes on that, it would be off into the, what if there's other planets, you'd, be, you'd hit them on, you'd all land on the moon somewhere. Unless Joshua was on in uh, Joshua was on planet Earth that didn't move, and like the Bible says, the sun set and rises. That's what you guys say, don't you? But you say, no, it doesn't really. Suck. You have a sunrise service, and they say, right, but it ain't moving. Yeah, it is moving. You can take a picture of it. That ain't moving. Yeah, it is. No, it isn't. Yeah, it really is. No, that ain't moving. That did not just go down in the west. Mm -hmm. It just did. It's dark out. Where'd it go? You were moving. Oh. Now, let's go. Did I, did I even look at, uh, sorry. Look at verse, uh, Revelation 21, look at verse 22 and 23, and we'll close. For real. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple. Now, we ain't getting all that. That's, uh, anyway. But look at verse 23. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. Why? For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. So that goes all the way back to Genesis 1 1. In the beginning was the. I don't know. And God created, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. There was no sun there. The sun is for you after the fall. I'm telling you it is. How do you know that? Well, because this new deal doesn't have one. How do you know that? You just read it. Yep. It says there's no need for it. You'd have to say God does things without a purpose. Is that true? That's what we do. We do things without purpose all the time. Even when God tries to tell you, you're wasting your time right there. So this whole thing about, well, what do we do? Why do we do it? I, why do I read the Bible? Because what is being presented out there very often is not anywhere near what God said it is. 
What are you going to do about it? Yeah. Well, won't, they can't both be right. Now, now, before you get out of here and say for sure, I just taught that the earth was flat. I've never seen the earth outside of walking on it. Neither have you. You don't know. You have to be very careful so people get all bent out of shape when, for whatever reason, some spiritual behind that. When you talk about flat earth, round earth, globe, whatever. When I brought you in, in, in Isaiah 40, it says the earth is a circle. I didn't get to it, but I was going to go there. We'll go to it on Sunday. And they say, see, the earth is a globe. It said a circle. Globe and a circle aren't spelled the same. They're not the same thing. And so when anybody says definitively the earth is either flat or it's a globe, you have to take by faith either one of those two because you yourself have never been off this planet far enough with the perspective to be able to determine that it's either flat or a globe. There are people that believe 110% that it's a globe and will tell you such, give you scientific, quote unquote, scientific fact about fact. There's guys that say the earth is flat today. There's a so called the flat earth society, whatever these guys are. But we know what's interesting about the flat earth society, guys? That's, that that these, these globe guys don't do, these guys give you scripture. And when you look at the scripture, every time you read about the planet, or the earth rather, and again, it never called a planet, by the way. That's a weird deal. It's not. But what they say is, well, earth, that's a planet, it's round. Earth is a planet, it's round. No, the earth is never called a planet. It just says earth. You, you used to have people that believed that the thing was flat. Probably longer than you've had people say that it wasn't. And all their cultures and everything. You can go down into India and all sorts of South America and the, the thing, the turtle was carrying it around or whatever, all the, and it was always flat. And then somebody said, no, it isn't. And everywhere you read, if you, I'll, I'll, if Sunday I'll go over them with you. If you're here, oh, you got to buy the tape. Every one of them say it's not moving, and it's spread out, and it's got pillars, and it's like an under a footstool. You ever see a footstool? It's got pillars on it. Would you say that's a ball? So you don't know. You'll know when you get raptured out. Just turn back. Oh, there it is. But I won't come out of here. I believe it's 70-30. I believe 70% it is a flat thing, and 30% it's a ball. It's a ball. Now, anybody that tells you 100% it's one or the other, they're not honest. And if that's how you think now, you're not honest. Because you never see. How are you going to tell? Because you're going to show me NASA. You're going to tell me to go there. Those are the same guys that say you come from monkeys. NASA. They believe you come from monkeys. Now, is that what you started a, a conversation about when you're dealing with somebody at McDonald's? Nah, I'll go there. <laughs> hey, you know the worth is flat, right? Nah, I don't go there. But would I go over the truth? Is there truth to be known about the planet or the Earth? Okay, do you want to know about it? Okay, how would you know, how would you find out about it? Okay, Father, bless the night. We thank you for you. Yeah. Yeah. There's something to that flat deal, man. And every time I've ever brought that up, I was on an airplane and it looked pretty flat from up there. No, it didn't. No, it didn't.